All right, it's been a probably good four years since our viewers have had an opportunity to uh, see you in the flesh. <laughs> Why don't you give us an update on what you have been doing in that time? Well, in the last four years, we've been doing a whole lot of training. Um, uh, the Lord, after 10 years of me praying for the Lord to send somebody, uh, five years ago, he sent someone. So four years now, plus the one, is uh, what I've been doing is training that one person. Um, because God wants her to take over the ministry in Thailand. So with that in mind, we have been also training other Thai people all over the, all over the country. And uh, I mean, I go up into a, a, a Bible school and we train the graduates there every two years, the graduating class. And to the point now where we've, we've trained almost 500 people, 500 graduates from the Bible school, then they go up into the hill tribes where they live. And then they teach that up there, you know? And it gives them a way to go into the hill tribes without, without uh, going directly to the adults and, and making them feel like they gotta do something or, or whatever, but the children is, uh, the program is set up to have fun, you know? And it's just the last 20 minutes that talks about the Word of God, but we implement the principles from the Bible all through our whole program. So the children are le learning discipline along with how to have fun. And uh, these, are, these are instrumental things that God has chosen to use to, to change uh, generation of people from the child up these kids are learning something they're not being taught from anyone else and so God's using this ministry and this type of program to make a difference in their lives so that like the scripture says you raise up a child it doesn't say raise up your child it says raise up a child in the way they should go and so that's what I believe we're there doing. We're raising up the children in the way they should go. And when they depart, they'll return, okay, when they get older. My concern isn't with their, their daily walk. There's too many. There's hundreds of children in the garbage dump and hundreds more over in the slum where we go every day. So it's, it's, not, about, it's not about having them live with you and and being on them all the time about how to live. But that we are the example every day as to how a Christian man or woman should live. So that they see that love and that consistency. Then when we show up there like every day, we're, we're there visiting and praying. Um, if they have a problem, they don't run to mom and dad if they have a mom and dad. They don't run to grandma or grandpa or, or the person who's in charge of them. They run to us. And the adults even come to us because they see that there's people there that care, that love them, not just for what we can do for them, but that our interest in them is more spiritual than it is physical. And that's what we try to project on a daily basis so that God's, God's gospel is being walked out in those places every day. It makes a difference in their life. You might not see it right now. It, m it might take 10 years, it might take 20. I've been there 16 years now. I'm seeing a difference. I have kids that, uh, th these, these kids uh, are, are like our kids. And when, when I am with them, they call me dad or grandpa. <laughs> and, and these kids want, they want to, to see that love and they, they crave it. I, I, I can't say enough that what we're there to do is to change a generation of children, to change that thinking. It's, it's about the way they live. Buddhists don't live like Christians. Uh, Hindus don't live like Christians. Muslims don't live like Christians. Christians are the only ones that live like Christians. And these children are learning how to live through what they see in us. 
they have never met a God that loved them. They only know about these gods that they're supposed to love. But they don't answer them. And our God, Jesus Christ, he answers these kids. They, they see the changes. They see the prayers being answered. And our three kids, they go around, they pray for other kids. They actually go around and pray for other kids. When kids, kids come to them and say, I'm sick or I'm hurt, we'll pray for you. But they learn that through discipleship, through walking with us every day. That's what we're there for. And to train others to do it too. How are you seeing this, what's going to be the next generation, potentially living different lives because they have spent the last decade having that opportunity to witness what it means to be a Christian? The first thing that I noticed, Jennifer, is that these kids are having kids. But the kids they're having, they're bringing to kids' church. Now that says, that, that speaks volumes to me, that they know the place where their children should grow up and they know how they should be, even if their parents messed up. They still know what's right. And instead of taking them to the temple, they bring them to kids' church. So that's, that's a really big deal. That's one of the things, I hope that's a, a good answer to what you're saying. Uh, another thing is, the kids that, that we're training now are, are children who have dreams. That's, that's something that so many kids don't have. They just don't have purpose. They have no idea what that even would be like to have goals outside of the garbage dump or, uh, or, or away from a, a real poor and slum-like life. Their parents' parents grew up in the slums and their parents grew up in the slums and now their children are growing up in the slums and, and everybody's still in the slums except for some of our kids are getting out of the slums now. And they've got dreams, they've got ambitions and those things I believe with all my heart are coming from God. If we've got viewers who are going, I, I feel God telling me to make a change, I feel God telling me to do something, but it's hard for me to get over the hurdle. What could you say to them to encourage them to, to have the strength and encouragement to take that step forward? Well, first of all, Jennifer, he's our strength. We're, in our flesh, we can't do it, but so many people try. It's, it's not gonna happen by your strength. It's gonna happen by the Holy Spirit, and it's gonna happen by the strength of, of Jesus Christ. So, the first thing I would say is, Truly, you must give your whole self to him. Not holding back anything in any corner of your thinking, in any corner of your life, in any corner of your ways. You have to convert to Jesus Christ. As his word says, if you love me, you will deny yourself and pick up my cross and follow me. It doesn't say when you feel like it, and it doesn't say how you feel like doing it. Tell us how we can be a blessing to, to you as you continue to go out and do what God's called you to do. There's always need. Uh, we work in the garbage dump and in a, in a big slum. And, and we're stretched throughout the country of Thailand and in three other countries uh, to do training and to monitor ministries that we have planted. Uh, our needs are really basic. They're really, really very, very simple. Um, one of them is kind of big. We need a sidewalk truck, a sidewalk Sunday school truck where the side will fold down and we've got our, our screen on there. We've got our, our speakers. We've got our puppet stage. We've got everything on that truck. So we need that. That's a need. Uh, when that's going to come, I'm prepared to wait until that time. Uh, but we also do need prayer and and we do we do a lot of giving that's our whole ministry children don't give okay they don't support this ministry with finances and so we've always got to depend on the people who God puts on their heart to help us and it's not everybody and it's not all the time 
But from time to time, we do these huge programs where we give a bag of rice, five pound bag of rice to every child who comes to kids church. And that gets expensive. Sometimes we do a sundry package with a towel and a toothbrush and soap and, uh, and a washcloth and, and things like that. But those are, those are once in a while kind of things. When we need that though, I would like to know that there are people who hear this today that will say, all we need to know is when they need it and we'll be there for them. Uh, that's pretty much how our ministry is growing. We're adding staff. I have added two more staff up north in Chiang Rai in the Golden Triangle. And so that's not set into our budget, but our budget comes from God. So, you know, that, that's another way that people can help is to help support the new staff that we hire. Uh, we pay for the housing of all of our staff members. We don't expect them to pay the rent because rent is high there. This is Bangkok we're talking about. Might as well be New York City. And so rent is high, but our ministry pays for their, for their rooms. They pay for their, their utilities. And, and uh, we give them one meal a day. That's another way people can help, is if they, wanna, if they wanna buy a meal a day for a year, you know? It's only a dollar. You know, 30 baht is all it is. And uh, so, you know, a dollar a day is $365 a year. It's pretty simple. Our, our, like I said, our needs are really simple. Uh, the ministry is growing, and it's growing at God's pace. We just need to be diligent to push through until the end. So we need people's help. That's, that's how it works.